Hi, this is the second part of the ear infection in dogs. Today we'll be discussing um, how does your vet actually diagnose ear infections, how do we treat it, and uh, how can we actually prevent it in the first place from happening. So, you have brought your dog with an ear infection to your vets or with a painful ear, okay? And uh, usually what the vets would do is they'll perform a full examination so they don't miss out anything. So they'll go through the eyes, ear, uh, eyes, nose, teeth, listen to the chest probably, feel the abdomen, making sure everything is okay just because you bring it to the vet. For ear, then it'll be a little bit silly for them to miss out something obvious as well. So don't be surprised if your vet uh, so performs a full examination of your pet despite having only a problem in the ear. Then after that, we'll probably do an outer examination of the ear. So we'll look at the ear from a distance, okay, and see how bad is bad, how is there a head tilt, how bad is a head tilt, and is, a, is a, your little doggy holding the ear funny. And sometimes we may use an otoscope, although this is a preference of some vets. Um, personally, I find it quite challenging and daunting to try to put something metallic into a dog's ear that is already quite sore and tender. So my personal uh, uh, sort of uh, option is I tend not to use an otoscope unless the dog is very, very, very good, not too sore, and there's a good reason too. Something which I do do quite often, which your vet may do as well, is they may take a little cotton bud, they may swab the ear, okay? So they're not really sending off to the lab, but what they're doing is they're swabbing and putting on a microscope, and then we look underneath the micro microscope to see what sort of bugs are there, okay? Uh, and the uh, treatment of choice is that if they don't find any sort of a raw bacteria, they probably give it some medication that usually is quite useful. If they find raw bacteria, your vet may advise you to actually do a swab to send off to the lab to find out exactly what sort of bacteria and more importantly, what antibiotics to use. So after that, what do we actually do the treatment wise? How do we actually treat? Okay, so. Personally, I tend to treat according to the cytology, okay? If I see little round bacteria called cocci, okay, it's more likely for it to be staphylococcus or streptococcus, and these two bacteria, they're quite easily eradicated with simple antibiotics. Sometimes I may see yeast cell as well. This particular yeast is called melesthesia, and it is also quite common uh, uh, to be there. And like I said uh, before, the yeast and cocci, they are present anyway in general, even in our skin. But the immune system holds everything at bay. And if there isn't anything different or wrong to hold, to, 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 make, uh, to cause a problem, it's okay. But if there's a lot of it, then yes. Uh, the good thing is that melesthesia, yeast, and cocci, they're quite easily eradicated by using quite simple first-line antibiotics which your vets would uh, prescribe to you. However, if we see rods, okay, so bacteria, but they're rod-shaped, not round, but rods, um, it'll, I'll probably be advising a swab to be sent off just because rods, they can indicate uh, bacteria so like um, E. coli or Pseudomonas, which do, they do tend to have Quite a lot of resistance, potentially resistance to a lot of different antibiotics. So if I did not send the sample off, I can still give antibiotics, okay, and it may work. But the point being is that if it, there's a resistance to it, then there's no point giving antibiotic that, that that does not work. And we know that usually it's cocci or pseudomonas that can cause uh, that they can have resistance, which is why when you see rods, um, your vet may ask them to be sent off, okay, if they can't see anything on cytology, you know, do a little cotton bud swab, and can't see anything below there. Or if it's no better after the initial treatment, okay, uh, the next step potentially would be to swab, okay? And or, or uh, to swab to send it off to the lab to find out what sort of bacteria is not being resolved uh, despite using the antibiotic that your vet has given. Or to potentially uh, look for a foreign body because if there is a grass seed, stuck inside the ear and we find it quick enough because you brought it to the vets fast enough there isn't time for bacteria or malaysia to cause issues the swab may yield nothing at all but if the ear is very very sore as well something inside there we may have to go and take a look inside there to see whether there's a foreign body a grass seed or something else like a, 
I've seen little corn cobs before, I've seen corn ears before, I've seen uh, grass seed before. Uh, I've seen well, I've seen a tiny little piece of wire before, how you go inside there, I have no idea. But any sort of foreign body can get jammed inside there, can cause a problem that the dog can't get it out. They keep shaking and shaking, it can be quite painful. Sometimes you can see uh, without sedation, okay, and uh, with the autoscope, but sometimes it's just so sore and so painful that it may be best to sedate to reduce the stress of, uh, of your dog to look for the foreign body. Um, usually what happens is that we would talk about giving the medication first, checking for uh, and recheck in a one week's time. Okay, And uh, there isn't a fixed sort of uh, rule to this, it just depends from case to case. So for example, you bring your little dog in with an itchy ear, then we will do a cytology, then potentially we see some cocker and metastasia, we give it one week's worth of medication, we check the next week. If it is much, much better, great. If it is not better, then we may want to um, sort of uh, investigate further. How do we know an ear problem has resolved? Okay, so that's a very, very good question. So yes, you have diagnosed ear infection in the first place. And the next week, you bring your dog back to the vet. What's he gonna do to tell you that's resolved? Your vet can probably do one of two things. The first one is that uh, we can do a swab again, okay? And send it off to the lab to find out whether there's any bacteria. Uh, usually, usually that is not done. Not all the time, that usually is not done just because of two different reasons. Uh, we, uh, we go to the second um, thing, which I said, which your vet might do, is that assessing on clinical signs. So the initial problem was that your dog was shaking the head, scratching the ears, rubbing the floor, okay? And now that has all gone and your dog is happy again, the ear is no longer painful, it's no longer sore, and uh, some owners, they may be happy with that and not do any further testing. And that is why sometimes um, further testing, like a swab to find out whether there's any more bacteria, is not done because um, your pet may not need to. I look forward to seeing you in the next uh, live MT event. This is Amity.